Sanctum Mystery, starring Ann Seymour and Myron McCormick. Brought to you by the makers of Carter's Little Liver Pills, the best friend to your sunny disposition. Good evening, friends. Welcome. Welcome to the Inner Sanctum. This is Raymond, your host, teller of strange tales. Come in, if you dare. Now, before we begin, a word to those of you who don't frighten easily. It'll be no disgrace if before we're finished you find yourself trembling against your will. Inner Sanctum Mysteries takes great pleasure in presenting two of America's best-known and best-loved radio artists, Miss Anne Seymour and Mr. Myron McCormick. Tonight, these two favorite to the air lanes co-star in The Man from Yesterday, an original radio mystery drama by Milton Geiger, brought to you by the makers of Carter's Little Liver Pills, the laxative with the two-way action. For over 60 years, everybody has known that the name Carter's Little Liver Pills means gentle and efficient help whenever a laxative is needed. Yes, and they know, too, that Carter's Little Liver Pills bring added relief by waking up the flow of a very important digestive juice. So take advantage of this two-way action and ask for Carter's Little Liver Pills. Do you like to have your hair stand on end? Do you like to feel your blood run cold? Hmm. <laughs> Of course you do. Come along with me, then, to the jungle, still and hot, weirdly yellow in the strange light of the tropic moon. In a clearing, the African natives of Dr. Robert Rand's museum party sway to the slow throb of their drums. A few hundred yards off in the thick bush, a monstrous humpbacked shape drops silently from the trees move swiftly across the shadowed jungle floor. Suddenly, the earth gives way under the dark, crouching monster's feet. He struggles wildly a moment and falls, disappearing into the earth. Bana! Bana run! Quick! Come quick! Ngagi! Come quick! Eh? What, uh... What's up, Sangala? Is something wrong, Sangala? Bana, you come fast. Bring big gun. Oh, what is it? Ngaji. Gorilla? Where? Old man, gorilla. He fallen trap. Oh, you shouldn't go, Bob. You're fever. Where is he? Where is the gorilla? Sangala, show you. Bring big gun. You follow me. Can you see him down there, Bob? Can I see him? What a fellow. What a prize he'd be for Professor Converse at the museum. A full-grown gorilla. Ruth, we've got to get this fellow home, alive. Oh, Bob, it's dangerous. You're ill. Must you? Converse would never forgive me if I didn't. Bob. What is it? The gorilla has made a sound for some time now. That's right. Turn the flashlight down there, will you, Ruth? That's very strange. Is he hurt? No. But look at him. See how he stares up at me. Yes. And such steady, knowing, intelligent eyes. Almost human. Yes. Gazing so steadily into my own. Unflinching. Unafraid. And puzzled, as though he's seen me before, as though he recognizes me, and is trying to remember me from somewhere, sometime. Moving a great ape from where he obviously belongs to where he obviously doesn't. All right, hold it, man. 
Keep the cage from swinging as it comes down the deck level. All right. Roll away. Easy. Easy then, huh? All right. Good. Good. That does it, man. Now cast away the lowering chains and begin closing the hatch. We'll be right up. Tired, Bob. A little. But it's a relief to have Engaji safely stowed away down here. Engaji. It's a musical name, isn't it? It means gorilla. Well, nothing to do but keep him safe in his cage, keep him from catching cold, and feed him wild carrots and parsley. If it were for anyone but Professor Converse, I'd chuck it all right now. Sorry I started it. I... I don't like him, Gadgie. Oh, he's a gentleman and a scholar. Don't talk playful nonsense about him, Ruth. He's a killer. He is not. I happen to know. What do you mean you happen to know? Have you been around his cage again lately? Well, I've been teaching him a few simple tricks, if that's what you mean. What do you call a simple trick? Well, for example, shaking hands with a lady. Ruth, you haven't. I have, and is my arm torn from its socket? It is not. Ruth, don't you understand? You can't make friends with a gorilla. You can't compromise with the jungle. And Gudge is clever and he's dangerous. You watch with those beady little eyes of his. You wait with that tricky little brain of his. Until his time comes. Now, don't give him his chance, Ruth. Oh, you're not well, Bob. And so you magnify the dangers and the menace of the jungle and all that bookish stuff. All out of proportion to... Well, what... What's the matter? Look at him. He's been watching me all the time. You see how he stares at me? Never batting an eye. Never moving a hair. Watching me. Matching my gaze, stare for stare. Oh, come out of it, Bob. Been like this from the moment we captured him. Ruth? That abysmal brute knows something. Oh, darling, this stuffy ship's hold is getting you. Let's go and feed some quinine, huh? Very well. What will I do with Ngaji back home? That's Professor Converse's problem, and he's welcome. Up the ladder with you. All right. All right, men. Batten it down. Bye-bye, Ngaji. So long, old man. Be good. Now, don't squeeze so hard. Hey, hey, Butch, take it easy. No, 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 mustn't pull. Stop pulling, do you hear? Engage. That's better. Now, let go of the lady's hand. That's it. <laughs> now, then, how about some exercise? Think you could walk around the hold here with a distinguished dame on your arm? Yeah, let's see how this chain and iron pin work on this door. <laughs> they think you can't be trained, but I know you can. <laughs> oh, this is easy. Oh, have this iron pin up in just a minute. Oh, just be patient, old fellow. Oh, here it comes. Oh. Well, better luck next time. Ruth, you down there? Ruth! Tell me, Bob. I was just having a word with Ngarji. Well, hurry. We've got little old New York on our horizon, and I'm high glad. very 
very kind of you, Professor Converse, putting Ruth and me up at the museum like this. That's so. You have plenty of room. So I want to keep an eye on that fever of yours, because you won't. <laughs> well, nevertheless, Professor, we won't impose on your hospitality a moment more than it takes us to get settled again here in America. Yeah. Here's another door. That's you, Rand. Thank you. This old wing is out of use, but it still has electricity. And what's more important, heat. So the zoo can build proper quarters for Ingaji, we'd better keep him in here where the temperature is even. Hmm. I've been thinking, Professor. These oak doors wouldn't be any problem at all to Ingaji if he happened to get on the loose. True, true. The door closing off this old wing from the new building is really made of iron. I see. So, unless your gorillas of the armor-piercing variety, pretty safe. Here's next to the last door. This used to be our dinosaur room. It's a huge room. Well, here we are. Royal Suite itself. <laughs> Ruth, what are you doing in here? I'm talking to Ingaji. Hello, Professor. I shouldn't become too familiar with Ingaji, Mrs. Rand. Oh, he's quite gentle. You know what he does now? He takes the rings off my fingers and then gives them back. Takes the rings off your fingers? Ruth, come on, let's get out of here. All oh, oh, right. You're rougher than a 500-pound ape. He's a real gentleman. Look at him. Look how he presses his face between the bars. To get a closer look at me. And it's been like that since... By George, I'll give him a good look at Don't me. Don't get too close, Ran. Now, careful. Well, he doesn't know you well, Bob. Bob! There, you ugly brute. Take a look. Take a good long look. Uh, well, what do you see? <gasps> oh, no! All right, Paul, I didn't miss me. Could have shattered your skull with that blow around. Well, it's only because he doesn't know you, Bob. He does know me. He looked into my face. And he saw something. What does he see? <laughs> what do you think he saw? Well, I'm no fortune teller. I'm only Raymond, your host here in the Inner Sanctum. But I can tell you he must have seen something. But what was it? That's the big question. Yes, and when that logy, dull, sluggish feeling tells us that a laxative may be needed, the big question is, what laxative will do you the most good? Lots of folks have answered the question successfully by taking Carter's Little Liver Pills. Why? Because Carter's Little Liver Pills offer help in these two effective ways. One, they help relieve irregularity in an efficient, thorough, yet gentle manner. Two, usually within a half hour after taking them, Carter's Little Liver Pills wake up the flow of a very important digestive juice. It's this vital juice that helps tone up a lazy, sluggish digestive system so that folks can lose their grouts and feel better. You better keep that in mind, friends. And next time, remember Carter's Little Liver Pills. The laxative that helps in more ways than one. All right. Do you still want to know what the man from yesterday saw when he... Looked into Rand's face. <laughs> You'll be sorry, but you asked for it. So let's go into Ngaji's cage with him now. As he listens to a strange, mysterious uh, voice. Uh, Ngaji, Lord of the Jungle, do you hear me? Uh, uh, do you hear Ngaji? Do you hear the jungle speak? Ngaji. I am in the I am the jungle. Jungle. You looked into the man creature's pale eyes. Do you remember now? Do you remember that other Ingaji a thousand million moons ago? Before the pale man creature walked here? Man. Man. Wait. Do you remember Ingaji? Remember. You fought with him in the jungle. Fought for the beautiful she. He conquered. How you hated him. Hey. He was mighty. And he was different from the others. 
When the others swept through the trees, that other one ran swift as the wind on the ground. Remember. Remember. Hey. You fought and you died. That other one who was different stood triumphant in the clearing. His neck half bitten through. Victorious. He who would one day be a man. Man. Your conqueror then. Your captor now. Hey. Hey, man. Where is your strength, O Ingaji? That this same other one conquers you again. As he did a thousand million moons ago. I am strong. I am in Gaji. Yet the weak one wins. Kill. Exactly why I'm here, Professor. Getting to be a habit around here. There's a knocking. It must be that feverish fool ran. Oh, come now. We want you here. Well, there's such a thing as wearing out your welcome. You paid a thousand times by bringing us back that magnificent gorilla. I don't consider that adequate compensation. Professor, I might as well tell you. I'm sorry I ever blundered over the brute. He's just getting you again. Go to bed and take No, no, no. I'm afraid of him, Gadgie. Not in the physical sense. I could cope with his power, his force. But he's changed. I can't cope with, with what he's become. It infuriates and humiliates me that that gorilla has something on me. Has me at some disadvantage that I don't understand. It's gotten under my skin. You remember when he struck at me three weeks ago? Do I remember? Of course, Angie. He changed after that. When he looks at me now, he isn't puzzled. He isn't searching his memory for some clue to me anymore. He knows. He knows who I am and what I mean to him. Whatever it is, he hates me. Hates me with a dreadful, consuming energy. I don't question that, Rand. It's plain enough. Have you here? He never had those tempers. Now something is tormenting him into a frenzy of hatred and defiance. Something in that secret brain of his. You'd better calm him down before he dashes out that secret brain of his. Come on, Rand. We'll talk later. Look at those eyes. Where have you seen such hatred? Or such tremendous living power. Yes. You've got to admire it at first. You almost think for a moment that he represents the super race. That big, black-haired, purebred gorillas are the dominating people. And on the basis of sheer power with a certain amount of intelligence and ruthlessness, you think he ought to rule. And you stop to think. You remember. Yes, he's pure black gorilla and powerful. But after all, he's just a gorilla. Oh, I, I thought I heard him judge you fighting in here. Well, you did. Your precious beast was being attentive. You catch cold running about barefooted like that, and that wouldn't do. Because Ngaji might catch it from you, and that would be the end of Ngaji. On second thought. Perhaps you'd better run around there for this. But, Bob, he's worth a fortune. Well, so are you. Now run along back to bed. Professor Converse and I have a chess game to play. Eh, hey, Professor? Oh, 
Ngagi. Ngagi. Uh, uh, Hi, uh, old fella. I brought you bananas. Here. No. No, I haven't got any more. Uh, what? Oh, my hand. Which one? This? Or the last? Chill, pal. Take it easy, though. It breaks. That's a good boy. Uh, oh, no. Come on, Daddy. Give me back the rings. Come on, hand over the jewels. I'll pick them up, Ngaji. Ngaji! All right. I'll get them myself. But you won't hear the end of it. I'll show you. You've eaten your last banana for a month, and don't you forget it. Uh, Ngaji! What's the matter? Uh, oh, don't you know me? Ngaji! Stay back! Stay back! Professor. Hey, Scott, the fruit. There's a light in the wing. Look. It's loose. The fruit's loose. Wait a minute, Rand. Here. Take my revolver. I'll come along. Never mind. Stay here. Call for help. I can't hold him with just a revolver. Hurry! Mom! Mom, help me, Mom! What happened to me? Ruth! What happened? Are you hurt? That's my answer. I unlocked the cage. He opened the door and fell over. Yeah. 
And that it will happen again. I only wonder when. And where. And who will be the victor? Then. Yeah, let me look at you. Oh, yes. You're hurt. There are the marks of teeth on your neck. An unusual birthmark. It's occurred in my family for generations. Shows up when we become excited. Is it strange, Professor? All right, friends. You can come out from under your table. Everything's all right now. And God is dead, and we're safe for another 10,000 years. Good. Oh, Mr. Hurley, he and God, he was only imaginary, so don't let him worry you. Oh, no, you're right, Raymond. Especially when real things can be so much more troublesome. Oh, you mean things like an irritable, sour, out of sorts feeling that so often warns us the laxative is needed? Yes, and that's why folks have been taking Carter's little liver pills for years. They know the name stands for dependable, gentle relief. Yes, and besides, folks know that usually within a half hour, Carter's little liver pills will wake up the flow of a very essential digestive juice. This juice is all important to normal, proper digestion. So why don't you take advantage of this time-tested, two-way action and ask for Carter's Little Liver Pill? Well, friends, it's uh, time to close that screeching door to the inner sanctum until the same time next week. Invite all your friends to be here with you. It'll uh, give you courage. <laughs> the safety in numbers. Well, next week, our ghost artist, uh, <laughs> pardon me, guest artist, uh, comes with the highest credentials. He, um, he was on the horror roll at spirit school. <laughs> Fine student. And for anyone who'd like a snap course, an exciting mystery reading, let me suggest this month's inner sanctum novel, The Murder of a Novelist, by Sally Wood. It's on sale at your favorite bookstore. Now, friends, here's an urgent, serious thought. Remember the Red Cross. It needs your help now more than ever. And also remember you are giving both for Christmas and for America. And your presents are United States defense bonds and stamps. Buy all you can afford today. Well, good night. Pleasant dreams, huh? Attention, armchair detectives. One way to solve a puzzling case is to keep your eyes and ears open. What valuable tip would you get from this conversation? I ought to have been home two hours ago. Got to get this order out, Tom. It's important. But I've stayed three nights this week. Well, so is everyone else. Come on, Tom. These days, ground things out. But you fellas don't feel as punk and low down and out of sorts as I have lately. I can't afford to. There's too much work to be done. So when you get the feeling slowed up and sluggish... Why not do something about it? Yeah? What do you suggest? Try Carter's little liver pills. Right. And when you don't feel good, try Carter's little liver pills. They do the work of calomel, but have no calomel in them. Well, they are simple pills made of vegetable drugs. They wake up the flow of one of our most vital digestive juices. When this vital juice flows at the rate of about two pints a day, it helps to digest our food and bring back the glorious feeling that goes with regularity. Then most folks feel like happy days are here again. But be sure you get the genuine Cottage Little Liver Pills. 25 cents at all drugstores. This is the National Broadcasting Company.